Hey guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we will be doing an introductory lecture of inflammatory bowel disease. So let's get started. So what is inflammatory bowel disease? Inflammatory bowel disease or IBD involves chronic inflammation of all or part of the digestive tract. IBD primarily includes ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Both pathologies usually involve severe diarrhea, pain, fatigue, and weight loss. IBD can be debilitating and sometimes may lead to life-threatening complications. So if you look at my picture on the right, you can see the healthy segment of the bowel. And then in the middle, we have this image of what the Crohn's disease manifestation looks like. And you can see muscle hypertrophy, the cobblestone appearance, and fissures within the bowel wall. And finally, in ulcerative colitis, you can see a red inflamed mucosal layer, which is the innermost layer of the bowel, and a lot of ulcers, which are these little sores that develop within the mucosal layer. The geographical associations of the disease. Both diseases occur at highest incidence in Europe, the United Kingdom, and North America. In North America, incidence rates range from 2.2 to 14.3, cases per 100,000 persons per year for ulcerative colitis and 3.1 to 14.6 cases per 100,000 persons per year for Crohn's disease. So if you look at my geographical map at the bottom, you can see the maroonish color that shows the highest incidence of the disease. And you can see quite clearly that the frequency of the disease is highest in North America and parts of Europe and the United Kingdom. The age, sex, and cultural associations of the disease. The peak incidence of onset for ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease is between ages 15 and 30 years old. A second peak occurs between ages of 60 and 80 years old. The male to female ratio for ulcerative colitis is 1 to 1, and for Crohn's disease is 1.1 to 1.8 for males to every one female. Ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease also have a two to four fold increased frequency in Jewish populations in the United States, Europe, and South Africa. So this is my little graph below, and you can see those peaks that occur between ages 15 and 30, and again, it peaks up between ages 60 to 80. And that's for both the diseases, for Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. And something very interesting about IBD is that it's a very popular disease amongst Jewish families across the world. The environmental associations. Urban areas have a higher prevalence of inflammatory bowel disease than rural areas, and high socioeconomic classes have a higher prevalence than lower socioeconomic classes. So this disease is quite interesting also because it tends to be more prevalent among people who live in urban areas and have a higher socioeconomic class in comparison to those who are less wealthy. The lifestyle associations. The risk of ulcerative colitis in smokers is 40% that of non-smokers. Additionally, former smokers have a 1.7-fold increased risk for ulcerative colitis than people who have never smoked. In contrast, smoking is associated with a two-fold increased risk of Crohn's disease. Oral contraceptives are also linked to Crohn's disease. The odds ratio of Crohn's disease for oral contraceptive users is about 1.4. An appendectomy is protective against ulcerative colitis but increases the risk of Crohn's disease. So these are all the lifestyle associations in regards to the development of IBD. The familial associations. If a patient has inflammatory bowel disease, the lifetime risk that a first degree relative will be affected is 10%. If two parents have inflammatory bowel disease, each child has a 36% chance of being affected. In twin studies, 58% of monozygotic twins are concordant for Crohn's disease and 6% are concordant for ulcerative colitis, whereas 4% of dizygotic twins are concordant for Crohn's disease and none are concordant for ulcerative colitis. The risk of developing inflammatory bowel disease are higher in first-degree relatives of Jewish versus non-Jewish patients, 7.8 versus 5.2 for Crohn's disease, and 4.5 versus 1.6 for ulcerative colitis. The anatomical site and clinical type of Crohn's disease is also concordant within families. The pathological associations. 
ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease are both associated with Turner syndrome, and Hermansky-Pudlak syndrome is associated with a granular mitose colitis. Glycogen storage disease type 1AB can present with Crohn's-like lesions of the large and small bowel. Other immunodeficiency disorders, such as hypogammaglobulinemia, selective IgA deficiency, and hereditary angioedema, also exhibit an increased association with inflammatory bowel disease. So now let's get into the etiology and pathogenesis of the disease. Inflammatory bowel disease is currently considered an inappropriate response to the endogenous microbial flora within the intestine with or without some component of autoimmunity. Importantly, the normal intestine contains a large number of immune cells in a chronic state of so-called physiological inflammation in which the gut is poised for, but actively restrained from, full immunological responses. During the course of infections in the normal host, full activation of the gut-associated lymphoid tissue occurs, but is rapidly superseded by the dampening of the immune response and tissue repair. In inflammatory bowel disease, this process may not be regulated normally. So basically, all that means is that normally our intestine contains a large number of immune cells, which means cells that are able to protect our body against harm. But in inflammatory bowel disease, these cells attack our normal tissues within the bowel and see them as some sort of an invader. And in this way, it is an example of a process that's not regulated normally because they attack self-tissue. Inflammatory bowel disease is a polygenic disorder that gives rise to multiple clinical subgroups within ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Genome-wide searches have shown disease-associated loci on many chromosomes. Some loci are associated with both ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, suggesting some overlap in pathogenesis. Specific gene associations are mostly undefined. However, several predisposing genes have been identified. CARD15, or caspase-associated recruitment domain containing protein 15, on chromosome 16 is a cytosolic molecule that senses bacterial muramal dipeptide and regulates intracellular signaling. The CARD15 protein is expressed by intestinal epithelial cells including panet cells, monocytes, macrophages, and dendritic cells. Loss of function mutations in CARD15 are highly associated with Crohn's disease and may account for an up to 10% increase of Crohn's disease risk. Crohn's disease-associated CARD15 alleles either allow NFB activation or decrease intestinal antimicrobial activity by diminishing defense in production by panet cells. Homozygosity for these mutant alleles confers up to a 40-fold increased risk for fibrostenosin. So below is a picture of the CARD15 or NOD2 gene. And this is a gene that is found on chromosome 16. And when loss of function mutations occur in this gene, people are more prone to the development of IBD. Inflammatory bowel disease has also been associated with polymorphisms, DLG5, and the IL-23 or interleukin-23 receptor. Indeed, patients with inflammatory bowel disease and their first-degree relatives may exhibit diminished intestinal epithelial cell barrier function. So also individuals who test positive for that DLG5 or the interleukin-23 receptor, if you look at my little image below, you can see the development of Crohn's disease associated with that interleukin-23 receptor. So they are more prone to the development of these diseases. Defective immune regulation in inflammatory bowel disease. The mucosal immune system is normally unreactive to luminal contents due to oral tolerance. When soluble antigens are administered orally rather than subcutaneously or intramuscularly, antigen-specific non-responsiveness is induced. Multiple mechanisms are involved in the induction of oral tolerance and include the deletion or energy of antigen-reactive T-cells or activation of CD4-positive T-cells that suppress gut inflammation through secretion of inhibitory cytokines such as interleukin-10 and transforming growth factor. Oral tolerance may be responsible for the lack of immune responsiveness to dietary antigens and to the commensal flora in the intestinal lumen. In inflammatory bowel disease, the suppression of inflammation is altered, leading to uncontrolled inflammation. The mechanisms of this regulated immune suppression are incompletely known. 
The inflammatory cascade in inflammatory bowel disease. A sequential cascade of inflammatory mediators extends the response. Inflammatory cytokines such as interleukine 1, interleukine 6, and tumor necrosis factor promote fibrogenesis, collagen production, activation of tissue metalloproteinases, and the production of other inflammatory mediators. They also activate the coagulation cascade in local blood vessels and increase the production of von Willebrand's factor. These cytokines are normally produced in response to infection but are usually turned off or inhibited at the appropriate time to limit tissue damage. In inflammatory bowel disease, their activity is not regulated, resulting in an imbalance between the pro-inflammatory and the anti-inflammatory mediators. Therapies such as 5-ASA, which is 5-aminosalicylic acid, compounds are potent inhibitors of these inflammatory mediators through inhibition of the transcription factors such as NBF that regulate their expression. Exogenous factors and IBD. Multiple pathogens such as Salmonella, Shigella, Campylobacter and Clostridium difficile may initiate inflammatory bowel disease by triggering an inflammatory response that the mucosal immune system may fail to control. Anaerobic organisms, particularly bacterioids and Clostridia species and some aerobic species such as Escherichia may be responsible for the induction of inflammation. Agents that alter the intestinal flora such as metronidazole, suprafloxacine and elemental diets may improve Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease also responds to fecal diversion demonstrating the ability of luminal content to exacerbate the disease. On the other hand, other organisms, so-called probiotics such as lactobacilli, bifidobacterium, tinea suis, and saccharomyces may inhibit inflammation in animal models and humans. Psychosocial factors can contribute to the worsening of symptoms. The role of the infection. The role of the infection in the pathogenesis of inflammatory bowel disease has been evaluated in two ways. The correlation between specific microorganisms and inflammatory bowel disease and the possible association between acute gastroenteritis and inflammatory bowel disease. An association between Crohn's disease susceptibility and specific infectious agents such as the measles virus, mycobacterium paratuberculosis, and the paramyxovirus has also been suggested but remains unproven. Normal intestinal microflora may contribute to the development of inflammatory bowel disease in susceptible individuals. Consistent with this hypothesis, is the observation that animals which are genetically altered to be susceptible to inflammatory bowel disease do not develop the disease when raised in a germ-free environment. After excluding patients who had acute gastroenteritis within six months of inflammatory bowel disease diagnosis and adjusting for potential confounders, the risk of inflammatory bowel disease was significantly increased after an episode of acute gastroenteritis. In addition, there was an approximate five-fold increase in inflammatory bowel disease risk in persons with previous diagnosis of irritable bowel syndrome. An increased risk of developing inflammatory bowel disease, both Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, was found in a population-based cohort study of 13,148 patients with documented Salmonella or Campylobacter gastroenteritis when compared to a matched control group 1.2 versus 0.5%. This increased risk was highest during the first year after infection but was observed throughout 15 years of observation. Thank you guys so much for watching this introductory video on inflammatory bowel disease. I do know that this video didn't dive into the specifics of Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, but those will be coming up soon. I just wanted to paint a picture of all the factors that contributed towards the development of these diseases and give you guys the idea of how multifactorial IBD can really be. So hope you learned something from this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment and share. And if you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.